Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session, the next generation of mainframers. And we have two great people here who represent that next generation of mainframers. Let's look at the let's look at them right now here. We have Alex Kim, who is with Viacom Infinity, and he's an IBM Z mainframe engineer and architect. And we have Jesse Lane. Uh, I'm going to pronounce your name incorrectly, Jesse. Maybe you can help me there. It's Jesse Lane Punongbayan. Punongbayan. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> From Broadcom. And she's a product owner of DevOps, and she also works very heavily in our Zoe project. And my name is John Mertick. I'm the director of program management here at the Linux Foundation and the director of the Open Mainframe Project. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having so, us. So, no problem. No problem. So, I have some questions for you all, but to help sort of set the context, I want to talk about really what is the Open Mainframe Project really, really quickly. And this is a project here at the Linux Foundation, it's been here for the last six years and its real focal point is, you know, the understanding of the mainframe, you know, it's, it's integrated, it's part of enterprise IT. Forward thinking enterprises are looking at their computing infrastructure as a com competitive advantage for them. And the tools that they're choosing, it's not from all one vendor anymore. It's a multitude of different vendors and it's a multitude of different solutions, whether, it's mainframe, edge computing, cloud, on a traditional on-premise distributed computing. All of it is used by enterprises these days. And where the open mainframe really project really comes in is, how can we make that connection between the mainframe and the rest of enterprise? And the path to do this is through open source. And the projects that we host here at the open mainframe project all fit within that bar here. So you can see here that vision, vision and mission that we have on the screen really crisply aligns with that. And one of our real key projects here, which is a real shining star of how this happens is a project called Zoe. And Zoe is a project that's three years old and it came with that idea of how do we get ZOS connected to enterprise DevOps, the rest of the enterprise. Um, you know, traditionally mainframes interacting, programming with them, there was different mechanisms. Um, you know, even going back in time, people used green screen terminals and that has moved on. We've seen newer and newer technologies being used in that place. So Zoe came in here and said, hey, let's, let's develop tooling that lets you use those technologies that are being used to the rest of the enterprise and have it so that you can interact with ZOS services. And it's really been a great success. And it's not just from a technological standpoint, we've also seen from a community building standpoint, it has come together. And we've seen from a downstream ecosystem standpoint come together. So some real fascinating things that we're seeing happening here. So I wanna kind of dig a little bit into, um, you know, both Jesse Lane and Alex's background here. So maybe Jesse, we'll start with you. Tell me, how did you get involved in mainframe? That's a great question. You can call me Jelly, by the way, so it will be much easier. Um, okay. So I started my career in mainframe, ooh, I think 13 years ago. So right out of college, I applied in a local bank in, in the Philippines. And there I applied as a programmer trainee and I passed and I was assigned to their mainframe department where I became a COBOL developer. So it was really, really fascinating and weird for me because we never learned about COBOL. And then my first job is a COBOL developer. But it was also a good experience because there I learned how to use the terminal. It's, it's, it's an old school way of coding and you get to be resourceful. You, you learn about the system really heavily because you need to know how it works. You need to know where the input file comes from and what the exact output will be um, designed or written. And so it's good for me because I was able to understand at least how mainframe works in an application developer point of view and how the system works at that time. And then after my first job, I became an expat in Singapore, and there I became a COBOL consultant, you know, more um, 
exposure in mainframe tools. I learned about um, MQs. I learned about Kixmore and DB2s. And then after that, I transferred to Czech Republic, where I was hired as a system administrator. So I'm an, an L1 support. And there, I was able to learn more about the system. I do IPLs. I do starting of DB2s and kicks and so many things. So my knowledge about mainframe really widened a lot. Like, you know, it in, involves me more. And then I joined Broadcom at around 2017. And this was the time that I started with ZSMF. So I learned about how to provision products in ZSMF, how to use it, how to incorporate, um, let's say, bash codes or bash scripts um, through provisioning the product. And then I joined Zoe with um, first the CLI team. So I created plugins for Zoe CLI and then I joined the Zoe Explorer squad to start with the VS Code um, extension. And I was able to, to learn how to integrate modern tooling onto mainframe. And it's, of course, create modern tools for mainframe developers. And that's my career journey. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great career journey. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting just kind of how it bounces around, but there's that theme of mainframe um, throughout it. Alex, I'd love to learn about your uh, journey as well. Why did, what, get, what got you into mainframe? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I have been to many different journeys too, but you know, stayed on the mainframe for 20 years. Um, so I started as a chip designer. I was a hardware developer at IBM for Chipsy doing a chip design for a crypto core processor that, are, that goes into the mainframe actually. Until then, I didn't have any clue what mainframe was. So I was doing uh, chip development and the um, IO development in the mainframe for seven years in Poughkeepsie. And then I switched my job to sales side, technical sales, uh, helping clients in Wall Street and the mainframe de deployment and then use the mainframe for their business applications. So I was helping a lot of, you know, clients in Wall Street that understand the importance of the mainframe for their business. Um, so after serving the clients, um, you know, about seven years, um, I joined Vicom Infinity. Uh, we are Platinum IBM Business Partner for Mainframe. And, uh, Working with, uh, you know, uh, someone like Lance Santoro Chia that uh, get involved a lot of, you know, ecosystem on the mainframe, we were able to join Open Mainframe Project. And I was lucky to, uh, you know, learn about Zoe Project. And we participated in some mentorship program by Open Mainframe Project. And we started, you know, creating some new open source projects such as Zebra so that we can help uh, mainframe users and find a way to create a new opportunities and also uh, recruit the new mainframers such as you know, our you know, interns at the OMP mentorship program. So it's been a great journey learning from hardware side, moving to the software side and also contributing back to the open mainframe project with the open source. It's been great experience. That's awesome to hear. And, and I want to dig into both of you from an open source contribution perspective here in a moment. Before I do that, I want to sort of ask you, told us the how, like, where, how did you get here from, you know, how did you get there from here from there? What's the why? Like, what was, what's been the motivating factor to keep you in this ecosystem and, and staying as they call it, a mainframer? And maybe Alex, why don't you answer this one first? We'll kind of move things around a little bit. Sure. Um, so to me, mainframe uh, is a big, um, big jungle. And, and for someone coming to the mainframe space as a new newbie, it could be very, uh, you know, confusing or hard because a lot of acronyms and terms are totally different from what you are familiar with if you are, you know, coming from the x86 side or, or workstation side. But Knowing, you know, the, the basis of how and why the architecture of mainframe is designed, that really helped me and 
Um, also, what drives me to stay on mainframe as well as the open source for the mainframe is that you can actually see the needs from the clients and users of the mainframe. And then there are so many things you can do and help and contribute being part of this open source community for mainframes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, uh, Jelly, tell me the same story. Like why, why mainframe? Because you've, you've done a lot of different things in mainframe. Um, so tell me why. That, that's true. Um, originally, I can tell you it's about job stability, you know, because I, I do know that <laughs> mainframe jobs is very stable. But through the years, it's like similar to what I say about Cobalt, mainframe has become a big part of my life. And I, I truly, truly love it. Um, the more that I learn about it, the more that I say I'm going to use fell in love with it because it's it's very big. Like what Alex said, the architecture of mainframe is very big and complex. And you know more as you go through your, your career journey. Like the more experience that you have, the, the more things that you learn about mainframe. And it's, it's not just like, a very simple learning it's it's a very interesting learning you know especially with my career that i started with a 3270 terminal that i learned how technically how computer works in in an old fashioned way that it fascinated me because coming from let's say a with a UI that a modern UI, I don't really know what's happening on the background of it. Like say, for example, if I do TypeScript programming, there are modules that I import that I not, I'm not really sure how it works. But if I work with COBOL, I should know and I will know what will happen. So that, that part there is what I really like about it. And then when I went to system administration, I like that. I was able to understand how the system works, how when you do an IPL, what would be the products that are involved in it, what would be the started task, or what, what is the importance of this timeline, why do you do the IPL every weekend, you know, things like that that affects the banking system itself. And for me, that kinds of learning, um, I, I treasure those things. And then now that I'm part of the modern mainframe experience, I I am happy that I'm able to integrate more modern toolings to, to mainframe. And I'm, I, I can call myself, let's say, I, an inventor because I do try to research and invent new ways to communicate to mainframe. And as a developer, that's very challenging for me. And I, I stay with mainframe because of those things, because of these innovations. That's awesome. That's, that, that's, that's really interesting. Um, so... Both of you, I would dare to say, are top contributors to open source on the mainframe. I mean, I think that's that's goes without saying. Um, you know, Alex, you have done a ton of work in the Zebra project and you know other areas of upstream Zoe, including um, you know some of your own work there as well. Um, you know, Jelly, you've done a, a ton on the CLI um, and other contributions. Tell me. And, and, and I don't know how much outside of that you have done with open source, but I guess, you know, for somebody here who might be in the audience is like, oh, I'm an open source developer, contributor. Is it different on mainframe? What is it like on mainframe? What What is that experience like? Like, I mean, how, and especially in such an industry that is very much perceived as closed source, you know, the concept of being an open source developer here probably feels foreign to a lot, but it feels natural to you both. Tell me about what that experience has been like. Um, and whoever wants to jump on this one, I won't kind of do assign names. <laughs> Maybe I can start. Um, the one thing, well, the first thing that I noticed about contributing to open source or maybe a comparison between a main framer and somebody who's um, a contributor to open source is the mindset that they have in terms of programming. Because as a main framer, the one thing, or at least when you code in COBOL, the first thing that you think of is that it should be easy to debug or as much as possible, the more it is, the, the better. And don't use negative conditions. So, so things like that. And when you contribute to open source, sometimes for me, when I do my coding in open source, especially in TypeScript, they have a different mindset on how to handle things. 
and it's still modularized but I, I i cannot really explain it but it's it's somehow for me the way that people think in mainframe are very different on how they the open source world does in in terms of contributing code do you see that mindset changing it i mean do you have you seen that change i mean you've been this in for 13 years have you have you seen that change a little bit or i think so but um if in terms of being part of zoe um when we are let's say uh let's say i don't know advocating for this PS code part and how to contribute. I do see changes in terms of the students of COBOL and as well as the open source contributors. So I like that they have this combined mindset. They think about they think about how the how the mainframe will perceive this or how the mainframe will accept this and then they will innovate on how the distributed world are doing this. So it's like a combination on how you code in mainframe and how you code in the distributed world. So I do see those changes right now with, with the students uh, that I communicate with in, in the Cobble course. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Alex, tell me, tell me your experience. And again, you've been doing, you know, it, it sounds like from a lot of your background coming from, you know, chip design and then, you know, really working with Wall Street clients there. I mean, certainly not an area that it's natural open source, although we are seeing that change here. You know, as we've seen in other parts of this conference here, but certainly, you know, as Jelly indicated, um, that's a slow transition that's happening. What has mm -hmm. been your experience being a, a, a one of the leading open source contributors in mainframe? Thank you, John. And um, first of all, uh, I'm I'm just one of the the people who are in this project, and uh, um, I think that there are many other contributors uh, to doing a lot of commits to the GitHub than me. So I'm not really a main contributor. <laughs> you're too kind <laughs> about yourself. I mean, both of you are very too kind about yeah. yourselves. You're, you're doing amazing work. Thank you. Um, we, we have a team of people. Actually, um, the fascinating part of the, this open source on a mainframe is that you made old and new. Uh, I read a, a blog last night about, you know, the, the uh, old Roman, you know, architects, and, and they have a still like a Colosseum architectures out in the Rome, right? And then they build something new around it for, for the Pope's you know, house. And you combine these two together, the old architecture and the new architecture, and you have this beautiful piece of you know, the, the, the architecture you can experience yourself. I think the mainframe and the open source can represent that. You have this uh, very historical, uh, and proven technology that lasted over, you know, 40 years, almost 50 years, that still you know, have a code that from that time that runs okay with no problems, but you still, you have this new way of coding and new languages that can adapt and run a lot better than uh, the other architectures out there and with a better security. I think combining these two together with open source is, is very, you know, create a good synergy and it's very explosive. And having working with this uh, uh, new mainframers like out of college and they have no clue what the mainframe is, but talking about the mainframe architecture and how the individual instructions may interact in the CPU versus IO versus other uh, peripherals, they, they get fascinated and then, and they have no, you know, objection about learning about the mainframe and they actually get fascinated about the technology because they, they couldn't hear about it before and the contributions they make and as a team is great experience and, and that I think is driving you know uh, you know the, the energy of this contributing to the open source on a mainframe. That is awesome. So I want to do three rapid fire questions and then a closing one real quick. Um, just to kind of keep things going. Um, and for the technical people in the audience, you'll probably love this. And, and, and I, I borrowed this from someone I've heard use before. Both of you quick, what's your favorite text editor, your editor for doing um, code development? Yes, code. Uh, BI. <laughs> oh, you're a man after my own heart. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite programming language? Oh, well. 
uh, JavaScript? I, you know, I would, I, JavaScript, but I have to say recently, as we've started to dig more into COBOL, I've, I've drawn a huge, um, you know, affinity for that. Um, you know, that's definitely for sure. Um, and uh, I, I guess I, I said I was going to have three, but I only had two really good ones. So maybe, maybe let's close to get to the, the back end here. Uh, you both have been in this industry a long time. Um, you have certainly established yourselves um, as, as leaders within you know, this group here and especially leaders within open source um, and mainframe, which is uh, fantastic. What do you both see as, I guess, or maybe a better way to look at this is, what's one thing that you're looking forward to in the future with mainframe? And maybe Alex will let you answer first. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the mainframe shapes the future. Um, recently, you know, of course, the, the hardware itself is mostly driven by IBM. And there, there are, you know, um, some other similar technologies out there, but a uh, the, the lot of concerns in the IT industry, especially for security side, I think the the mainframe architecture has a way to solve the problems and uh, using you know open source technologies uh, coming from other architecture into mainframe is actually a very bright and uh, exploit the uh, you know the hardware capabilities. That's awesome, Jelly. Yeah. So for me, I actually believe that today is a great time to innovate for mainframe especially with Zoe around. Um, there are a lot of things that, like what Alex said before, there are knowledge from the modern tooling right now or the, the modern development that we have and as well as the, the mainframe development. And so what I see in the future for mainframe is these two worlds will combine together and the people who knows about these two worlds will innovate more and more up um, for a mainframe. And so I do hope that, you know, there would be a lot of new generation of mainframers who will join the mainframe community and they will contribute their knowledge um, on how to, let's say, improve mainframe more and more throughout the years. That's, that's for me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, I think, I think we're seeing a, a certain resurgence um, in mainframe, not that it was ever gone, but it is so much more coming to the forefront right now. I have some links up here on the screen here. I want everyone, you know, everyone can sort of take a look at But While we have these up on here, um, I'm sure there's things that I didn't ask you that you would both maybe like to talk about here. And we have a couple, we have a couple minutes left here. What did I miss? Like what, what else would you want to share with this audience uh, around being that new generation of mainframer? I, I'd like to invite them to join our Slack channel and, um, uh, and uh, the, the GitHub and just take a look at. And uh, if you are from the financial sector and if you're interested, you know, making sure your transactions is secure, a uh, mainframe is the place. Exactly. Just try it out. For me, I, might, I invite you to try it out. There are um, the open mainframe cobble course let's gives you a let's say a public access to mainframe where you could try out all of these um, tools that we have in Zoe. So for me, just check it out. And of hey, course, you know, join our Slack. That's 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 half of the battle. Jump in there, yes. try it out, learn. I mean, I will say this is an extremely inviting community. You jump in there and you say hi. Um, people are going to go jump and talk to you. Uh, there exactly. people are really welcoming and exciting just to see new people get involved. And you can see here on the screen um, ways to get involved in the Open Mainframe project. I mean, obviously our newsletter, we have our projects. Um, you know, for those of you in the audience that are um, with vendors or um, users of Mainframe, there's opportunities for you to join as a member of the Open Mainframe project, just as uh, many of our other Linux Foundation projects. And you can learn more about that as well. Um, and certainly our communication channels, we have a great Slack channel, we have a community forums, um, we have a number of mailing lists as well, uh, YouTube, social, the whole nine yards, there's a lot of great ways to see what's going on, um, learn about, you know, more than just Jelly and Alex, but 
you know, a broad range of mainframe, um, mainframers, young, old, and from globally that are making amazing impacts and are really leading forward um, open source on the mainframe. So definitely spend some time and check all of that out. So I want to thank Jelly. Alex, thank you so much for joining us uh, and participating in this event. Um, I look forward to the day where we get to be back together again. Yes. Um, it's been a long time since we've all <laughs> been in oh, yeah. the same room, but I, I think that day is coming soon. So uh -huh. um, I hope you all stay safe and well. And mm -hmm. I want to thank you. Thank, thank you. Stay well. Hey, well. Bye bye. Thank you. And thank you all for attending this session. And uh, we look forward to uh, also seeing you again in the future and hope you all stay safe and well as well. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.